Good evening, and welcome to the Art and Culture Commission meeting uh, for the town of Prescott Valley. Uh, Ms. Weiss, can, sorry, can I get a roll call, please? Commissioner Wirtz? Present. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Gibson? Here. Vice Chair Quisenberry? Present. Chairperson Sinclair? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, you have in front of you a copy of the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, any questions, comments? Staff would like to request item 5A be struck from tonight's agenda. 5A? Yes, Stardust? Yes, sir. Okay. Any additional adjustments, changes, additions? One other item, uh, item 10A, to reflect work study Wednesday, January 9th with a 5.30 time. Okay, so we're changing that from, on the agenda, from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Yes, sir. Okay, sounds good. With that being said, staff will now zip the lip and let you move on. <laughs> okay. Any other comments, additions? If not, can I get a motion to approve tonight's agenda? I move that we approve the agenda as adjusted. Seconded. We have a motion to approve the agenda as adjusted and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, moving on. Approval of minutes from the October 17th, 2018 work study meeting. Any comments or adjustments to the meeting? meeting minutes for the work study? No. Nope. Okay. How about the, the October 17th, 2018 regular meeting minutes? Any adjustments, comments? Nope. So I would like to do a motion, get a motion to approve both the work study meeting, work study meeting minutes and the regular meeting minutes together. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve both the work study and the regular meeting minutes from October 17th. Okay. Second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the October 17th work study meeting minutes as well as the uh, regular meeting minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion pass. Moving on. Announcements, presentations, Commission, Public, and Staff. Mr. Woody? Yes, sir. I would like to remind uh, Commission as well as those in listener land that on Friday, November 30th, please consider joining us here at the Prescott Valley Civic Center for our annual Festival of Lights and Light Parade. This is brought to you in partnership with the Prescott Valley Chamber of Commerce, Commerce and our very own CEO, Marnie Yule, who will be reading the night before Christmas with all of our youngsters that are here in sight, as well as also kick-starting off with music groups, Welcome by Mayor Skoog, the infamous lighting ceremony at 6 p.m., the light parade soon following, and an awesome opportunity on the third floor, which we'll have a little slide later. But all of this fun kicks off again Friday, November 30th, 5 to 7 p.m., Prescott Valley Civic Center, which is located at 7501 Civic Circle. Uh, don't forget to drop by the library and check out Create a Tree. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. If you have interest in joining in this year's Light Parade, please get your entry in ASAP. And you can do so by getting a hold of the chamber. And they will be able to assist you with that entry. We look forward to seeing everyone out there enjoying the lights here at the Prescott Valley Civic Center. So we'll look forward to seeing you again Friday, November 30th. Some of the other added fun that is here with us uh, joining is the 17th annual, golly, it's hard to believe, 17 years of our annual exhibit uh, known as Create a Tree. This is uh, how, found housed within the Prescott Valley Public 
public library. On all the floors, we have 30, 40, 50 plus trees on an annual basis. This is a excellent free way to promote your organization in a very fun, artistic, and holiday experience and display where we encourage your creativity. Examples of this have been we've had different uh, organizations come in, whether they be representing a animal rescue group or a pet center where they stacked crates to represent their tree. We've had automotive uh, repair agencies come in and via mufflers and gears and transmission housings and everything else create their representation of a tree. Beauty salons doing the same with mannequins. Um, uh, styling chairs, all kinds of cool, fantastic stuff. School groups, you name it. Our very own Arts and Culture Commission has their tree, which is going to be a new, exciting display this year. So looking forward to have that. Uh, our, we are still accepting applications that actually through tomorrow, which will be Thursday, November 15th, if my memory serves correctly. Our setup dates for the event are on Wednesday, November 28th and Thursday, November 29th, with the event kickstarting on the same Friday night as the lighting ceremony here at uh, Civic Circle on Friday, November 30th, where our public voting begins, and we're able to then award at the end of the event, uh, following January 2nd, when all the voting ends, the People's Choice Award at the following Arts and Culture Commission, which I believe is January 9th, or is it the 16th, 16th meeting. So there's always a cool opportunity on doing so. So if you'd like to get on board, you can visit uh, the town website, pvaz.net. You'll be able to download your fillable application, zip that into as PDQ so we can get you on board. I think uh, there still are a few remaining uh, light areas, and so we can accommodate that. Look forward to having everybody on board and seeing all the cool, festive, uh, fun features that we have in store. So. Uh, again, if uh, any other questions, give us a call at 759-3090. Also on Friday, November 20th is an opportunity to get your picture taken with Santa. We're going to be up on the third floor of the Civic Center facility here. This is brought to you by the Parks and Recreation Department. Parents will be given a free link to the online photos of their youngsters uh, visiting with Santa and divulging their wish list. Uh, for the year. So don't forget to bring that and share it with Santa. If you'd like more information, visit us on the web or give us a call at 759-3090. And that is a wrap up of all the cool, fun, festive activities lined up <clears throat> coming to you for Festival of Lights, Create a Tree, and Pictures with Santa on Friday, November 30th in partnership with the Presque Valley Chamber of Commerce and their festive light parade. As I travel around town, I see it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Um, oh, going into the Fane Park area, I see the uh, lighting displays are going up, uh, yes, testing lights. Uh, it's a nice one-mile drive or one-mile walk that you could have through the uh, park uh, to see some great lights. Uh, exactly, and I forward. think this next this year will be the second year of they will have one particular evening when you can walk through the light display as well. So that's a very personal experience. So I encourage everybody to do that. And for more information on that, uh, that again is a support item uh, that we host with the Presque Valley Chamber of Commerce in doing that. And they're always looking for volunteers that can be able to come out and serve uh, with that uh, program on each one of the nights uh, that will be going through the year. So has the snow please. been ordered? It, As, it looked great when we had snow. What oh, was it yeah, last year? Yeah, exactly. Good. So we, we just hope it's not lost in the mail. So, yeah. <laughs> Understand. Understand. <laughs> okay. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Commissioner, I'll, uh, or Chairperson Sinclair, I'll just continue on with some programs and services. Please. Okay. Uh, just to let everybody know, we've got some upcoming day trips. We happen to have one on Thursday, December 6th. Uh, we'll be departing at 3.30. This is a night trip for us. Typically, everything is during the days, hence day trips. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Pretty <laughs> obvious. Uh, but we're going to be running down the hill to the Desert Botanical Garden and also looking at their display of uh, luminaris that is there. I will not attempt to pronounce the rest of that. So if any of you are not as tongue-tied as I am and going through that, I, I don't. I would say that's uh, nachos and chips and luminaris, and that would be a horrible thing to express there because this is a very neat cultural experience for folks to invest in and learn a lot, and it sounds as if I should probably do that. <laughs> uh, so we would encourage everyone, if they would like to join with us on the Southwestern Holiday Tradition, our group will drive down uh, and experience their holiday light show. Uh, the price for the trip is $65. That's inclusive of dinner and travel expenses and admissions. Uh, so we've got the full rounded package for you. So come on out. Have a great time. Sign up. Our seats go fast. Uh, so, but again, Thursday, December 6th, 3.30 to 10 p.m. Also, we have another wonderful, fun four-lettered word event. It is free. That is the four-letter word. And this is our New Year's Eve activities. We're very fortunate to be able to bring that back again this year. We have games, hot chocolate s'mores, a bonfire, and fireworks. Not just one, but two shows, 8.30 and midnight. Encourage everyone to come out, party with us, and welcome in the new year uh, at this awesome event. Again, December 31st, uh, 6 to 8.30 p.m. It'll be at the Prescott Valley Event Center parking lot, which is located off of North Main Street, and I can't believe we're talking about this. The year of 2018 is ending, and 2019 is going to kick in, so why not do it in fun, family, festive activities? Um, and so if you like to go to bed early, that's why we have that 8.30 time frame, but we also know our young people, this is an opportunity for them to get out and check out the big booms. I uh, encourage everyone to leave their pets at home for their safety and yours. And if uh, we also wanted to give a big shout out to our community partners, our Prescott Valley Police Department and the Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority will be joining with us. They're the ones that are helping handle the hot cocoa and the s'mores and bonfire activities for us. So come out and play. Uh, nice tight little window out there. Kick off your new year. Have a great time with us. Also in January, Saturday, January 25th, is our annual Polar Bear Splash. Last year, we had nearly 70 folks that joined us. We, that was a record-breaking year for us. We want to break that record. So uh, put this on your calendar again, Saturday, January 25th, 10 a.m. to noon. This is a free family event. We have a, uh, our annual and traditional pancake breakfast kicks off the morning. Again, this is free, brought to you by IHOP. We have the Ice Princess Contest. Why? Because we need more princesses in the world, and in this case, it's for hairy men. Get there, be there, be square. You'll learn a lot. Uh, checking Take all, all shapes, the... round, square, pair. Oh, without a doubt, but we need the hair. That's the <laughs> idea of the polar bear. Got to be there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we have our duck slide races. We have donut eating competitions, ice cream eating competitions, prizes for the polar bears, prizes for the competition winners, and we have different divisions for both adults and youth. So this is a fun, crazy wintertime experience. Join in the festivities. Again, free. There's no admission, no cost to come out and play. We don't even charge you to get in the pool to use the water. We don't even do that. This is totally free. All kinds of crazy and fun. So the splash is not over at Fane Park? No, this is at Mountain Valley Splash, hence the splash part. The yep. Pool. So this is a ton of fun. All kinds of awesomeness, either hanging by the string or slamming your face in a bowl of ice cream all during the outdoor winter times. This is where you see us at our best, Andy, and I know that surprises you, but <laughs> this is crazy stuff. Take the initiative of issuing an uh, invitation to uh, <laughs> represent the commission as well as the department uh, to uh, Chairman Sinclair and to Director Witte to join me on this day for the Harry Man Ice Prin Princess competition. Both. Well, I'm going to give up the goods right now. I can tell you this much right now, Robert. <laughs> There is no hope for me in this contest. I think between me and you guys, uh, we can represent. 
I'll be there, and I'm hoping to see you. <laughs> wow, this should be I, fun. I, I was going to say. To do that. Yeah. <laughs> a chest. I'm thing. serious. I, I will okay. be there. All right. It's on. It's on. Look out. Good. All right. But if Andy backs out, well, then I'm sorry. It's not a competition then. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a chest toupee. <laughs> okay. And then we're, we're going to make this work, Andy. We sure it's will. It's called an area rug. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> she just stole Nancy my thunder. Oh, wow. Mm. What mm -mm. time on that day is? is uh, it, it runs from 10 a.m. <coughs> until noon. Right, but the particular, I'm not going to be in the water for that time. Oh, no, no, no. no. It, it's all part of the lead up festivities. Gotcha. So, okay. yeah, Very come good. out and join. You yeah. get right out. It's a quick thing. Yes. <laughs> Lots of fun, fun, fun. So we'll feed you, we'll dine you, you know, all those good things. So, all right, cool beans. I believe that concludes my slides for our announcements and presentations. Okay. Thank you. Very You're welcome. Much. I, I bet you wish I never would have. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item number six, division department updates. Mr. Witte. I have nothing in addition to add to my particular report or the department's report as a whole, but I am happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions, comments? Good. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on. Chairman's report, very brief, very, very brief. Uh, we still have taking place here in the library, a public uh, art <laughs> exhibit. <laughs> and that's going to go and uh, be on display until uh, this coming Monday. Yes, sir. So if you want to see some very good artwork from local artists, if you want to purchase some very good artwork from local artists, it's here on display uh, in the library. So please do drop in. Moving on, old business, programming report. Yes. Uh, Ms. Hooper asked me to give you all a quick little update. Uh, she and the instructor were extremely proud uh, that uh, a piano recital from our piano classes was held. Uh, Ms. Miranda Bailey, who's been working with us as an instructor for almost two years, uh, led this uh, event. Uh, just to give you a little background, Miranda is a classically trained pianist who's been teaching classes for almost a decade now. Uh, this was her first recital with the town. It was held on October 26th. She was expecting about 20 to 30 folks. She had over 60 people in attendance for her recital. That's so cool. Yes. Uh, it was so busy that the crowd was spilling out into the hallway uh, from the recital room, which is a very sizable room. Uh, eight of the students performed at the recital. All of them received a certificate from uh, Miss Bailey. Uh, for their dedication to learning to play the piano. A reception was also set up for the families to enjoy. Many people stayed after the recital, enjoyed the reception, taking pictures, and also talking to Miss Miranda about future opportunities. Cool. So we're very excited about that. Now, what also occurred is the word got out, and our guitar instructor was like, we are doing this. So now we're in the process of also setting up a recital for our guitar instructors as well. Yes. So um, this followed from uh, previous uh, sessions in regards to our ballet and our tap and jazz students as well. So those are all setting precedents. Our instructors are extremely excited. Our students are showcasing themselves to their talents, not only to their family, but also the community. So it's a very awesome and exciting thing. I, I know that uh, uh, Commissioner Sinclair, Commissioner Smith, Commissioner Gibson remembers on a variety of our different event days that we have our young people out there actually performing on stage mm -hmm. uh, during our extravaganza days, our family arts festival days, all of those kinds of cool things. Things. So our con continuous involvement of our programs and services in regards to event uh, is pretty doggone exciting. We're able to showcase our young people and move their talents forward in doing that. So pretty excited, very happy for not only Mrs. Hooper, but also um, Miranda Bailey, our instructor, and looking forward to Mr. West's uh, future productions as well. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. So we just wanted to give you a, a quick little shout out uh, as a point of pride in regards to the growth and development of our community and our young people, so. Two thumbs up. Yeah, thank you.
Would you want to comment also on the Create a Tree update? Yes, sir. Uh, again, uh, some of the items we talked about in our work study, uh, we've got over 30 applications as of today. Uh, we still have additional room for more trees and a few spaces left with electricity, so we want to encourage everyone to get out. Um, over half of our entries are new this year, so we'd like to encourage our, our past uh, participants to get their applications in with us quickly, uh, to be able to fill everything up, because we'd like to fill the library and jump next door into the uh, next uh, building over at the Civic Center and fill those floors up as well. But we're going to have a wonderful display with all kinds of uh, events leading into our Friday, November uh, 30th opening. So. Be there, be square, let's have some fun. Let's yes. decorate this place. Yes. How about an update on gold fever days? Oh, I messed up. This was a boo-boo of mine. My apologies. I forgot, failed to show you the images uh, from that night. We talked about the 60 people and everything. Here were some quick pictures in regards to the piano recital, so we wanted to share that in regards to all the families and, and uh, friends that were there. So pretty cool. Huh. Yeah. Fun. All right. Our next one relates to Gold Fever Days. I apologize to the commission. We canceled your show. Sorry about that. It was dangerous. It was. Yeah. Mother Nature was not nice to us, was she? And that's okay. We can accommodate. We did, And we are. And our accommodation is going to be found in the form of Saturday, April 27, 2019. Please plan to join us in Fane Park from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Why? Because there's gold and then there are hills. And we're going to have a ton of fun. We're going to celebrate Gold Fever Days down in our rich history in the Presque Valley area with a focus on pioneer era living and mining for gold. Guests will have an opportunity to try their hand at panning as well as tour of our historical sites in Fane Park, enjoy live entertainment, shop with local artisans and vendors, play games, enter contests, learn survivalist skills, and much, much more. Food trucks will be on site and there will be free fishing clinic between the hours of 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Don't miss this golden opportunity. Matter of fact, there might be a surprising gold opportunity found within the lake itself that has nothing to do with panning. <laughs> but it might go, Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> Not that you heard it from me. So more information will be on our website at pvaz.net. If you would like to be a vendor or an artisan, please give us a call at 759-3090 because we would like to book you up before those spaces get away from us. Our entertainment schedule is uh, solidifying as we speak, so we'll be able to put out that schedule of entertainment and activity. Again, we've got some great folks. Our site stewards from the Arizona State Park System will be there giving tours, uh, talking about a lot of the history, some of the very significant archaeological elements that are located out there in Fane Park. We'll have some of our historian docents that are out on site. They'll be able to talk to you about a lot of the history as it relates to all of the mining going back into the 18, uh, late 1800s 18, uh, into the early 1900s, talk to you about the history of the park itself, how the lake was used back in the day, uh, also be able to give tours of the Fane Chapel and understanding that element that's out there. Lots of cool, crazy things. We mentioned the pioneer living, so we'll be able to see some cooking, clothing, all kinds of the craziness that's out there. Uh, giving a review back into yesteryear. And I bet most of you may not be aware of this, but before there was ever a Prescott Valley, did you realize there was another town that existed and it resided in Fane Park? It's the town of Massex. And Massex was founded by Mr. Barlow Massex, who also built the, the uh, Victorian home that's located in Fane Park. And that was so that all of the different activities, there were stores, there were all kinds of things. There was even a Calvary encampment there in that area. So you'll be able to learn a lot, and we're going to do that on Saturday, April 27th, down in Fane Park during Gold Fever Day. Every time I go to Fane Park, when I go to fish, as I walk through the park, I'm looking at the ground all the time. There's still gold there. Yes, sir. Uh, it's interesting to talk to some of the gold panners that you see in the area. Uh, they'll show you their vials. They'll show you the gold. 
Um, one gentleman showed me his, and he said, that little bit, it's worth over $20. Uh, no, it was about $200, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, so I'm still looking for a nugget every time <laughs> I walk through. Uh, keep the granules. I just want to... Nugget, <laughs> and we know it's there. There you are. After a good rain and a good flood through the area, there's even more of it there. Yes, and again, historically, there's been millions yes. that has come out of that Lynx Creek corridor, uh, which is the main uh, flow of the system, if you will, uh, coming all the way through. So, And it's been going on for hundreds of years. So I encourage everybody to come out, learn more, find all of that. But if you don't, there's a nugget already there, and that's called Fane Park. At least that's my treasure that I look at there. So oh. those things. So cool. It's interesting to fish next to gold panners. Yes. You know? <laughs> and did you know fishing for you is illegal there at the park? What's that? I said fishing for you is illegal there at the park. Everyone else is encouraged. Just but, you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Have fun, buddy. Okay. Moving on. New business. Uh, regular meeting time adjustments. Mr. Woody, please. Yes. Uh, during our work study tonight, staff proposed a uh, possible concept of moving your regular meetings that have been typically always scheduled on the third Wednesday of each month and scheduled for a 6.30 start time. Uh, you all have uh, adopted a second Wednesday of the month for your work studies uh, to give more time uh, available for well-rounded discussions for work study purposes. So staff was inquiring if there would be any inclination of the commission moving their regular meeting time from 6.30 to a 5.30 start time on the third Wednesdays of the month. If not, we'll continue to move forward, but if there is, uh, staff would be looking for that recommendation and action, and then we would update all of the existing uh, calendars and operations to the 5.30 start time on each of the third Wednesdays of the month. Discussion? No objection. So do we need a motion? Yes, sir. We would need a motion, a second, and then a vote. Okay, I ask for a motion to have our regular meetings of the Town of Prescott Valley Art and Culture Commission start at 5.30 as opposed to the previous time that we had uh, 6.30. So moved. Okay. Seconded. On the third Wednesday of the month. On the third Wednesday of the month. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion pass. All right, super duper. We will make that change. Thank you, commissioners. Art at the center, call for artist. Yes, sir. Uh, during work study this evening, the Arts and Culture uh, Committee brought forward a review of the call for artists uh, to go to uh, printing and distribution. Uh, in that, we were just looking for uh, commission acceptance uh, action on that item. We'll send that out for printing and distribution ASAP based upon your approvals this evening. Now, the material will go to artists, art organizations, yes, museums, sir. schools throughout the western U.S.? Yes, it would definitely hit the four corner states. We have actually the West Coast in addition to that as well. Um, it, historically, we focused on art education institutions, galleries. Uh, we even hit uh, some free uh, public internet uh, sources as well. Uh, as an example, within the state of Arizona, that would be the Arizona Arts Commission. Uh, and then that information goes out through those publications. So that's our, our points of contact. Um, I know that the, the uh, committees reviewed those periodically over the course of numbers of different years. We've refined that. Um, we're always open to more. Uh, we go through locally within our area, provide actually uh, physical uh, copies of those calls so that uh, different galleries and our uh, Prescott uh, and Yavapai colleges will be able to share that with their students and faculty. Uh, and Commissioner uh, Wirtz indicated as part of our publication within our community that those announcements are also available through the monthly water bill mailing processes. Um, so that is our distribution process that we would make available. 
and continue moving forward. Now, the artwork is sculpture, three-dimensional sculpture? That is correct. The program is designed for uh, outdoor, durable, uh, three-dimensional sculpture, uh, uh, focusing on a monumental, a life-size or monumental size and sc scale and scope. Uh, that it meets those criteria of durability uh, because it is in an outdoor uh, unsupervised environment here at the Civic Circle uh, campus is the focus for all of that work that is on display. Of course, the Art at the Center program expands beyond our campus and it's done so in the context of our permanent collection items where we have it, it located in Viewpoint, Antelope Park, George Anderson Park, um, and a couple of, no, those are our three primary locations. We also have works within the library and the Civic Center as well, too. And this now, is a free program, um, so there are no entry fees, but it is a juried program. And so the committee will have a, uh, a request in regards to members that would go through that review, public involvement through that process, and uh, then those juried pieces would be uh, communicated to if the artist uh, so moved uh, to make that part of their program, which their application is indicating that they are. Uh, then staff works with them in regards to setting up the required secured bases, and then those works would be on display for a uh, period of up to one year uh, with the possibility of renewing a second term. And then the committee also has possibilities through whatever funding uh, is made available to them for possible procurement. There is no uh, guaranteed possibilities of that on an annual basis uh, for purchase and uh, moving into its permanent collection. All of the pieces uh, generally are on display with us, are available for sale, which is again the purpose of the program is, is to encourage uh, the purchase of uh, local artisans uh, work out there. And then a percentage of those proceeds if a piece of artwork is sold, uh, which has been as far as uh, Florida, we've had pieces uh, shipped down there that have been purchased out of our program for pi private collections. Uh, those proceeds are then put back into the program for maintenance purposes. I've met various artists throughout the community. Uh, many of them will make their artwork, be it that it's two-dimensional, three-dimensional, and they have no idea how to display it. Uh, this is an opportunity where people can actually come in and apply to display their work here, uh, possibly even sell their work. So. Yes, sir. This is one of those programs designed for the three-dimensional work in the outdoor setting. We have another fabulous program with our public art display, which is set up for also three-dimensional work, but predominantly two-dimensional work. And that's done through our public library environment. So two cool, fabulous programs that the Arts and Culture Commission has. So if you have that nice sculpture that you've made sitting in your lawn, sitting in your house, you want the world to see it, Please apply. There you go. So uh, staff is looking for a uh, motion, a second, and uh, approval uh, for moving this uh, piece out. We'll get it printed and uh, shipped to all the various locations and promoted so that uh, hopefully we'll get a plethora of artists participating. I'll make that motion. I move that we submit the Prescott Valley call to the artists uh, printed brochure or application form to be printed. Okay. We have a motion to submit the application for printing and distribution. Yes, sir. Can I get a second? Second. Motion <laughs> and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion pass. Thank you. All right. Our last item uh, for action request under new business also relates to the Art at the Center. Uh, staff met with the Art and Culture, uh, or excuse me, the Art at the Center uh, Committee in review. This was also an item then that was recommend, recommended to be moved forward into a work study discussion that was held prior this evening for a possible consideration of acceptance of artwork for donation to the Art at the Center program. Uh, these are uh, examples of Mr. Gene Galazan's uh, artwork 
these are uh, also uh, currently on display at the Fippen Museum. He is wanting to donate these pieces to the Town of Presque Valley in the Art and the Center program. Uh, staff has met with Mr. Galazan. We have reviewed some of the pieces. Uh, we have informed him that we would be making recommendation to the commission that if they found the artwork of interest, uh, that there would be additional uh, work, and he has agreed to that, uh, to meet the qualifications of the Art at the Center program in regards to the structural integrity of the materials, um, as well as then also uh, moving some of the uh, pieces and also making sure that uh, a fair number of the particular um, items on there are not sharp um, so that there, if there is direct interaction with them that it would not cause harm. And he has agreed to make those adjustments if the commission so moved to recommend uh, to the town council uh, acceptance of these donations, the possibility of anywhere between three or five of these pieces uh, that would then be grouped in those numbers uh, to represent a, uh, in this case being that they're horses, a herd, if you will. Uh, and then uh, recommendations as well as placement, maybe perhaps at Fane Park or adjacent to the Summit Trail, uh, being that it, they're more of our natural area that would be indicative of where we might find these particular beasts uh, <laughs> out there. Um, so that is the action item that is being sought if, uh, and recommended by the committee to the commission uh, if they would like to move with a first, second, and uh, approvals uh, for presentation to council for their consideration. Oh, for me to make a motion? Yes, please. <laughs> I move that we pursue uh, a recommending to the council that we accept the donation of three to five horse sculptures created by Jean Salison, which would be placed in either Fane Park or perhaps along Summit Trail. Do you need more than that? Is that enough? That works. Okay. We have a motion. To second. <laughs> second. We love it. And yes. a second. <laughs> to present to... Uh, Council to accept three to five uh, steel horse sculptures from Mr. Jing Galazan to be, to be displayed around the town. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion pass. Thank you, sir. Unscheduled public appearances? Seeing none. Moving on. The next meeting of the Town of Prescott Valley Art and Culture <laughs> Commission work study will take place Wednesday, January 9th, 2019 at 5.30. And the next meeting, uh, the next regular alert, I'll get it out. The next regular Town of Prescott Valley Art and Culture Commission meeting will take place on Wednesday, January 19th, January 16th. 2019 at 5.30 here in the auditorium. If there are no other items before the commission, call for an adjournment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>